the reason I crafted these three episodes is to lay down a solid foundation in SOLIDWORKS drawings for you. Why? Because I want to introduce you to GDNT. That's geometric dimensioning and tolerancing. And it's been the secret sauce of big manufacturing companies since the late 1950s. And its importance is only growing. It's not just a technique, it's your ticket to standing out from the crowd. So before I dive deeper into these episodes, do one thing for your future self. Click on the link in the description below. Go save your spot for October 5th when I host a one hour free GDNT training. And trust me, you don't want to miss this. Go do that so we can get back to the video. All right, this is the advanced features and symbols. If you haven't watched the first two episodes, go back and watch it. Let's just start with an assembly. This is my Frisbee launcher under construction. I'm going to bring it in different views. Obviously, I don't want to see the center lines. I have to hide them ugly and the scale is not good. So we learned about going to the properties and just change the scale. Light changes, I think one to three should be fine. Uh, we need more views. So let's just move them along. Move them along. Right. So we want to put this here. This is odd, but we will keep it this way. High quality and so. Right. Doesn't matter the views because the point that we are going to learn is the bill of materials, which is something you should be familiar with. And I'm going to talk about overriding a value and creating a parametric table along with other stuff like using GDNT symbols. Okay. We have a bunch of components. This is an assembly and we want to know what components we have used in here. For that, we go to the annotation tab and we go to tables and we pick the field of materials BOM in short, select the view that you want to get the material from. You get the options top level only parts only or indented, which shows the parts and assemblies together. And therefore we don't change anything here yet. We click OK and we get the table. OK, the table is so long because woof, look, it's so big. We have to find a way to make it work. OK, it has 44 components, 42 numbered. And even if I place it here, it doesn't fit. What do we do? We place it here. We click the table and we just come here to see what we can do to fix this. Right. It's too big. It's just too big. I just remove this view. One thing that we can do is just extend the width of this column. We'll remove this column altogether so we can extend this. And then we just make them as small as possible. Maybe it does help. All right. Fortunately enough, it did fit into my page. Otherwise, if it was longer, I had to break this, copy it and break it into different sheets. Page two, page three, or just dedicate one full page to two sets of tables. Now, well, we see 42 components, but we don't see what each and every component is or how we can dedicate this. So obviously it's one of those assemblies that needs a second sheet. So we're going to add that. And as you can see in the previous episodes, we took care of this automation. Did I save it? Yes, I did. And it does change it automatically, which is good. Now we're going to assign or just bring all these top right and front view again. And this time we're going to assign some auto balloons to that, maybe even more. But I think and now that I want to do this, the scale is too big. So let's learn one to four. We move it here and we go to annotation tab. We find the Auto balloon. When I select the auto balloon, I can choose the formation, the pattern, if it's going to be around my component or in a linear format. I'm just going to leave it on default. Select the views that I want to assign my balloons to, and it just connects all of it. It's obviously too messy. Let's see if we can sort this out in a linear form. It's better, maybe, or maybe in a circular form. Worse, this one too big. The distance is too much. Let's fix that. Auto balloon is one of those things that you have to click OK before coming out of it. By pressing escape, you just cancel everything you have selected. So we just select OK for now. Now we're going to move this. And now this brings me to my next topic, the magnetic line, which you can find by selecting one of these. This this dashed line that you see here is the magnetic line. And these U, the red U that you see here, it's supposed to be red like this. It's the magnet form. It means it's connected to this line. When I move this, all these dimensions move with it like that. I can also scale them together, then move it here. Same with this one. 
and here move this view to make it cleaner okay another thing i want to bring your attention to is that we have 42 components but i'm sure i haven't looked at this yet i'm sure a lot of the numbers are still missing i'm not sure which one but let's just see do we see one where is one uh one two three four just i just need one missing number i think four is missing in these views that we have number four cannot be seen so we are going to have to add more views and that's why i'm going to bring the, the bottom view maybe bring it here let's just see if we auto balloon this view number 32 okay where is number four um back let's just put it in the back no number four so this does happen let's just go to sheet number one and see what number four is number four is c1 and i don't see c1 so we go back to the component we will find c1 open the component to see which component we are looking at okay it's the ball bearing inside the components you don't see it because it's hidden inside this this is c1 okay just because it's hidden we don't see it and that's causing the issue let's just go back to the drawing boom 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 now the hidden component cannot be seen so maybe we could create a third sheet okay um for the hidden components and maybe we use some sort of cross-sectional view uh, with this option just put the first one here the second one here and the third one here yeah, let's just create the cross section. The model could not be properly sectioned because there are some errors in the assembly. I have to go fix it, but that does not change anything for our purposes. We go to the annotation tab, auto balloon, select a view and yep, what do you know it? Number four appears here. Number four, boom on section AA. So it's assembly too big. We had to have three pages if you're not happy with the alignment you have here you could break it i taught you that in the previous video so we have three numbers here if you go to sheet number two we have three four 34 30 5 36 we have 42 components and 36 balloons it means six components are still missing you're gonna have to see which one and go create the cross-section view to accommodate the balloons for that component so that's that and when we go to sheet number one we see the table and you can just right click on a column you could insert a column or you could delete a column you could hide it adjust the size and so on and so forth this is how you create a bill of material for an assembly or a component in solidworks we learned about auto balloons and magnetic line if you want to add anything like a drawing or a text you could just use note also if i go back to sheet number two you could manually override the number of each balloon if you want to i don't recommend doing so it's number 10 you could change it to 20 and it destroys 20 changes 20 to 10 you could do this but don't just play with these without knowing why you're doing it you should have a reason once you know the reason you can do this but without a don't the balloons can also be circular they could be triangle they could be different forms as you wish they can also be changed here okay one other thing the parametric table is very important for example let's just say this product is supposed to come in three different sizes and they vary in the height only here so instead of giving it a value you you just use smart dimension give the actual value you don't care what it is and you do the same for the width okay so they come in three sizes that is x and y and we want to create a table over here a general table with like three columns and four rows and we put it here and we want to give values to a and b and we do sizes small medium and large so this product is coming to the market in three different sizes of a small, medium and large. So A and B varies for each one. So you want to say for, for small, we have 150. For medium, we have 200 and large, we have 250. And over here, we have 170, 210 and 300, let's just say. So how do we do this? We select this one, that dimension. We go to the property manager, check override value and change it to A, okay? And do this one, change it to B. 
Now, when I give this drawing to anyone, they know, oh, okay, A and B are defined here, A and B, three different sizes. Now, this drawing represents three different sizes with a table. That's a very effective way of creating one drawing that represents multiple sizes. This is just an example of how to override a value. This override works in many ways. You could also give it a value, numerical value, doesn't matter, just to understand how you can change something manually in the drawing mode of SolidWorks. So that's that. Let's just open another drawing that has the symbols GDNT in it. If you don't understand the GDNT, don't worry about it. It's an advanced topic. I am releasing a course on it very soon. By the time you're watching this video, the course might be already launched. So I'm going to put the link in the description of this video. If you want to learn how to work with GDNT symbols, for example, this is a GDNT symbol. This is perpendicularity. This is datum C. We have the diameter and this is called MMC maximum material condition. So I don't want to get into that. I don't want to teach you GDNT. I just want to show you how you can assign the symbols of GDNT in your drawing for those of you who already know how to work with it. For example, we want to assign this symbol all over again. Let's just take a picture of this. Okay for my reference and delete this and recreate it. The GDNT symbols can be found in the annotation tab, geometric tolerance. We click that, we place the box where we want. Then we pick the position symbol. This is the position symbol. We add the value 0.1 with the material condition MMC and we add a datum B with the material condition MMC or in this case is MMB. But this is it. So the geometric tolerancing, the GDNT symbols is here. The datum, again, another feature for GDNT is here. You see A. Okay, this is datum A, this is datum B, datum C. You could just add datum C to what makes sense. In this case, I'm adding it here random. No other feature control frame is referring to a datum B. So datum D, sorry. So this is random, but just to show you how you can add it. These two are the GDNT symbols. Surface finish is important, but you need to have an understanding of the symbols. Okay. Okay, for example, what's the difference between this symbol and a symbol like this that is machined or not machined with this, with the value you want to put next to it, anything. You, if you want to assign a surface finish symbol, this is the option for it. I don't want to teach you surface finish because GDNT is a very deep topic. Surface finish is a very deep topic. Weldment symbols, they are deep topics. They are not a topic that I cover here. I'm just telling you, if you know those symbols, this is where you add them. And if you want to learn those symbols, link in the description below, go through my course. It requires a full course of its own. Then you know how to apply it through this video so if you know them this is how you apply it if you don't know stop this video right now go check it out go check the gdnt course pro and solidworks course pro these two courses i have are the best go check them out hi there solidworks lovers and enthusiasts i have some exciting news for you because i'm launching a comprehensive course on gdnt on october 5th at 9 p.m eastern standard time or 6 p.m pacific time and you don't wanna miss it because to kick things off, I'm also hosting a one hour free class at the very same time. And in order to not miss that, you have to sign up through the link below this video. Go sign up now so we notify you just before we go live. You don't wanna miss this free class. It's a comprehensive course on GDNT and it would be pure value for you. If you have watched this video, this mini series about drawing, you don't wanna miss GDNT, trust me, it's free. And it's on October 5th, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Go sign up now. I'll see you there.